Hi, I'm Mark Medina with the Los Angeles Times, and this is the first edition of Lakers Roundtable, and I'm here with Mike Bresnahan, Brad Turner, also with the LA Times. How you guys doing? Can I point out, we are literally sitting at a round table. It's, it's not metaphorical. This is very literal. We're in the Laker media room, sitting at a round table, an empty Laker media room. Yeah, we're not, we're not making this up. No, no, we're not. Where's the beer? There is no beer. <laughs> Okay, then I guess we're sober. <laughs> we'll have to wait till afterwards. It's an alcohol free round table. <laughs> this, this edition, anyway. If this is bad for two and three, maybe. With their alcohol, this may be good. <laughs> People may think we're on alcohol with what we're going to be talking about, but uh, <laughs> hopefully we fool them. We will try. We will try. Well, guys, uh, Lakers just came off a um, victory against the Warriors. First game after the All Star break, 27 games remaining in the regular season before the playoffs start. What do you think is the, the number one priority as they close out the regular season? I mean, you got to get home court over the Cleveland Cavaliers, especially if the Cavs in the next uh, day or so make a big trade, get like Amari Stoudemire or Anton Jameson or Troy Murphy, three power forwards rumored to be going their way, one of those three anyway. If Cleveland makes that move, the Lakers almost have to finish ahead of them to get that home court advantage in the playoffs, assuming they meet in the finals, which I think most people would put them in the finals together, Lakers have to pass them. And with that, do you uh, think before Thursday, the Lakers need to make any type of trade or anything? You know, they've looked into a few things. Obviously, we've all heard about the Craig Heinrich trade, the possibility of him coming here. But getting him, does he put them over the top like Paul Gasol did? I say no. So you really want to stand pat, barring them not making a trade, the next important thing is, is to get healthy, it's to get Kobe Bryant back playing again, it's to get Andrew healthy again. Even Lamar Odom has probably with his fingers. You have to get healthy because if you don't get home court advantage, you at least want to be healthy going into the finals if you get there so that you can give them your best shot. Because if, if Kobe's dealing with the ankle again, if Andrew's dealing with the hip, no matter what they do, if they get home court or not, they, they probably couldn't beat Cleveland or they probably couldn't beat Orlando or Boston, but they have to get healthy barring anything else. Now, Mike, I know that you had a recent report talking with uh, General Manager Mitch Kupchak. Uh, at least in the story, mentioned that um, he hadn't planned on doing anything significant per se before the deadline. And from what you've been able to gather, do, do you think it falls under that he's happy with where the team is? Is it more of a, a salary cap issue? Or is it just the concern that with only 27 games left in the season that uh, there may be any type of learning curve with just getting acclimated. You know, I think you hit on a couple of things there. First of all, this team leads the league in payroll, is going to pay more luxury tax than anyone else, and the Bus family is very cognizant of that. I mean, they've put the money out already for this team, and they feel like they've put enough out, and that um, this team is championship caliber as it is. So it's partly financial, plus they like this team. This team is playing really well right now. Tonight, against Golden State being an exception, uh, that wasn't very impressive out there. 19 turnovers, not, not real focused on defense like they had been the last week or so without Kobe. But uh, they are not, uh, they do not feel any pressure to make a move, even if Golden State, uh, I'm sorry, even if Cleveland does get a, a quality power forward, which it looks like they're going to do. You mentioned uh, Kobe's injuries. He's uh, missed the last four games because of his left sprained ankle. And maybe not so much uh, against the Warriors, but the previous three games saw lots of team chemistry, lots of ball mo movement, very strong defensive performances. Brad, what, would, what do you think you would allude that to? You know what? I think it's not looking for him all the time. I mean, they're out there playing because he's not there. So if you pass the ball ahead, like, hey, you pass the ball to Lamar, who passed the ball to Powell, who might pass the ball to Shannon. So you keep moving the ball and you don't stop. You move the ball, move bodies, you get easier looks, you get easier shots. They're playing really good team defense as well, led by Ron Ortiz. Ron takes his one guy, puts a good body into him, hand into him, maybe an elbow into him, <laughs> maybe a knee into him, whatever it is. But they play, they're playing really great team offense and defense and it showed in those you know, four victories, especially the three. At Portland, at Utah, and at home against San Antonio, those are very important things that happen for them. See, I'm surprised Brad Turner knows about defense, having played at Pasadena High, 
where you know a good game defensively for them would be allowing 115 points. And so I'm you know at Buckley High where I went, you know you slap the ground as as you get down and in your in your crouch and you play good Duke basketball type of defense. Brad Turner. Brad, is this true? Let me tell you something, Mike Bresnahan. My high school team, the passing the Bulldogs, we were so great, not good, so great. We went to Europe and played basketball. Europe to represent the United States of America. The only team there, Mike Bresnahan, I will have you know that. <laughs> and as Shaq would say, you can look it up. We went to Palm Springs one year for a couple games. Does that count? I guess that counts. For <laughs> something, but not much. You're probably right. I could bring something to the table. I won a knockout championship one at one basketball camp one year. It was, what, were you seven or eight? How old were you? Don't lie. We'll find <sighs> out. We'll get the yes, paperwork. We we're Brad and I are very good reporters. Yes, we are. You're the rookie. You will tell us the truth. I think it was, it was around nine or ten. All right. Nine, okay, we'll take that nine out of ten. Yeah, you get a trophy or a medal or a T-shirt. Uh, I got a plastic trophy. I think it's somewhere, somewhere in the attic. I okay. could, I, so if, if you guys are looking for proof, it. Uh, so you've been to Luxembourg, Paris, Madrid, and Barcelona to play basketball, like I have. <laughs> then you guys can't talk to me. <laughs> yeah, he might be right. He might be right. So Brad Turner won. Uh, me negative. One and uh, well, what's your score? Uh, neutral, zero. <laughs> Neither good nor bad. Uh, now we've been talking about injuries and health. Uh, one development with that, Andrew Bynum came back against the Warriors. He missed the last two and a half games because of an injured hip. What, what did you take away from his performance and what do you see looking forward out of him? You know, it was solid. But towards the end of the game, he started slowing down. He admitted the hips were bothering him. It got sore. So he was sort of laboring a little bit. You know, but give him credit because the kid has had some serious injuries over his career. And to come back and play with this injury, it shows that he is tougher than people want to say he really is. He's a big kid. He's a bulky kid. So he has to kind of fight his way through this. He has to, if somebody might be mine over matter with him. Now he has to think that, okay, I have a hip injury. It's going to be painful, it's going to hurt, but I can play through this. And he probably can play through it. He might not be the same player he was before the injury, but he can play through it and he can help his team up because he is still seven feet tall. He is 285 pounds, he has long arms, and he has some skills. Now, that seems to be the general theme so far this season, just lots of injuries and lots of them overlapping. Pal Gasol's hamstring issues, Kobe Bryant's finger issues, just <laughs> every part of the body pretty much. Um, you know, Ron Artest with his feet, uh, Lamar Odom's gotten dinged up a little bit. Don't forget Ron Artest's head, and, and I'm serious <laughs> about that, the, the concussion. That counts for something as well. So how do you assess that? You know what, I mean, over the course of time, you think about this, they played over 100 games in 2008 when they lost to Boston. They played over 100 games when they beat Orlando in the finals. If they reach the finals this year, that'd be another 100 games. That's like 300 games they've played in three seasons. I mean, that's almost, if you add those games up, that might be almost a half a season they've played just in the playoffs alone. That takes a toll on anybody, no matter who you are. So injuries are a part of the game. They're a part of what happens. It's how you, I guess, finish the season. If you finish healthy, and you finish with a nice little run and a nice little groove, you can help yourself. But if you go into the playoffs with a guy still being hurt, still being injured, and not being smart about taking time off like Kobe is right now, like Andrew there, he took those two and a half games off, like Powell did with the hamstrings. If you're not smart about that, it won't matter what happens in the end because those injuries will slow you down and it will derail you in the end. Yeah, I mean, this is a gift for the Lakers to be going 4-0 and without Kobe Bryant, including three very tough games against, uh, you know, likely playoff uh, opponents uh, or li likely playoff teams. I mean, they're, they're buying time right now. Had you told me he would skip these four games, I would have guessed two and two, maybe one and three, maybe three and one, but definitely not four and oh. So what they're doing right now is much more than running in place. I mean, they're, they're really, uh, I'm really impressed by them the last week and a half. All right, we're going to save uh, the best for last year. Uh, th these past three games especially, I think it kind of opened up this wide open, you know, open up this wide open, open up this debate about some people saying Lakers are better playing off with Kobe Bryant in this pure sense of the team chemistry is better. Some are saying no. Actually, it was just a result of the rest of his teammates not playing passive anymore, some kind of seat in between. I mean, ultimately, we're, what's your guys' take on that? You know, I, we got a few wacky emails saying this team should trade Kobe. 
they should not trade Kobe. <laughs> this team we've seen a... They will not trade Kobe. Let's be honest with yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, set the record straight there. Yes, uh, I, I, you know, there's no way he, he will not be... Uh, he, he's not going to be traded, uh, despite the wacky emails that Brad and I have both received. Not a lot, but just enough to make you think, what do people think sometimes? But, you know, the team we've been watching, they've played very well, very good teamwork. Again, tonight against Golden State, not too sharp. But there's no way that team can win a seven-game series without Kobe in the West Finals against Denver or Dallas or San Antonio, much less the NBA Finals. Without Kobe, this team might win one game on a big stage against Cleveland. It's, it's, you perish the thought of trading Kobe and, and being better because of it. Look, the Lakers are better with Kobe Bryant. They are a great team with Kobe Bryant. Now, when he comes back, if he integrates himself back into the offense, which I think he might do after seeing what they've done, they become a better team. The Lakers will not trade Kobe Bryant. The Lakers are not a better team without Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant will be back, and then everyone will see how great they really are. Well, it sounds like our case is closed, and with that being said, I think we'll also close up shop as well. But thanks again for all your insight and time, and uh, look forward to chatting away again at this roundtable. Can, can we get a sponsor next time? We're working on it. Ooh, I like the sponsor thing. How about, like, Bud Light somebody? I'll, uh, I'll bring next time. I, I like that. <laughs> you sure? You're the rookie. I'm, th I'm thinking more like some food, maybe like some... Uh, some chips and dip. Yeah, that'd be awesome. You know, Pizza or... Yeah, OB's, my favorite little uh, taco joint in, uh, in Manhattan Beach. Can taco. we get a sponsor from that? You know, the probably Matt, because I was not at Taco Tuesday tonight. I was here working. So. But you plugged it. I did. I did. If you've been there before, you, you skip the game. <laughs> Let me add that fact in there. <laughs> it happened once. It'll, it'll not happen again this week, anyway. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, uh, hopefully we'll see if we can get that sponsor. But for now, it's going to sign off. <laughs>